Head over to miniaturemarket.com and with thousands of board games at discounted prices like Squid Inc. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. You're about to see my Allegro one minute overview and final thoughts. This is designed to see if this game warrants more of your time. If it does, just keep watching because then you'll see my full intro overview and final thoughts. However, if you don't want to be spoiled anything and you want to skip right to the full review, use the time index below in YouTube. Squid Inc. is an underwater corporation game for two to four players where you're going to be bringing employees into your mailroom and then out into the workplace, activating abilities. Now you're trying to get your employees onto the workforce because the higher they move up the corporate ladder, the more points they're gonna be worth. Like this one's worth 42, six times seven, or three times three, nine points. And if you're on the bottom tier, it's only a one times multiplier. Now you'll either be taking employees and taking the clout, like three, allowing you to add them to employees in your mailroom and then bringing them out into the corporation. Or maybe you'll be activating abilities like Two Cloud allows you to activate the middle manager, which allows you to promote anybody from this tier to the next tier. Or maybe you like the employee's ability that's right here, so you can take them down to your mailroom, hoping to get enough clout five to get them out into the workplace. And then hoping to put enough clout on there to activate their ability later. Plenty of cards with different abilities allow you to do all sorts of different things like moving things around, promoting themselves, switching opponents' peoples, taking over different spots. Things are always in flux because you're promoting and sometimes demoting, bumping people to lower tiers. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Squid Inc. has great art that draws you in. You have temporary alliances constantly working with this player now, that player later, messing with each other, betraying each other later. Synergizing abilities of all the different creatures is a really fun puzzle to figure out. And there's always an answer versus even the most powerful cards if you figure out how to do it right. The abilities and the abstract nature of this game really makes this game awesome. It shines best at three players, but I'd play it at any player count. On the negative side, it's probably too mean for some. The person in the lead is gonna get ganged up on other people and king making can happen. But my biggest problem was the end game and the timing of that whole part is way too variable from being very short end game to a very too long end game. But at the end, the game is fantastic. A great sort of one hour game with a lot to think about, but still light as well. Got a saxophone serenade, Squid Ink's great. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going underwater to a corporation where we're gonna be promoting different crabs and other sea creatures all the way to the top of the company. Today we're talking about Squid Ink from WizKids. Let me show how this is played. I'll see you on the other side. In Squid Inc, you're gonna be running an underwater corporation where you're gonna be having different employees that are in the mailroom and eventually you're gonna be getting them into the workplace and you're gonna be using all sorts of special abilities. And over the course of the game, when they get into different spots or tiers in the company, they're gonna be worth a certain amount of points in the bottom level in the next tier and as you go up. Because everyone in the bottom tier is worth a point times what level they're at, how much clout they have. But if this one was here, it's gonna be three times three, so nine points, or here, 15 points, or here, 21 points depending on where they end up at the end of the game and that's how you get points whoever has the most points once the entire uh, game is over is the winner now turns are very simple on your turn you're going to take one of these employees you're either going to dismiss them or add them to your own mailroom if you want to add one to a mailroom you would simply just take it and you can add it into your mailroom and you can only hold three and these are ones waiting to be brought out into the corporation but instead you can dismiss them for a certain amount of clout. This is two plus one, this is two plus zero, and this is zero minus one. So if I wanted this one, I could dismiss this one for two plus one, so three clout, and this goes to the dismissed. And by the way, there are a ton of cards in, these, uh, in this game and they sit there as a deck. Now this is my board a little bit into the game. Now with those three clout, I could do two different things. I could put all the clout, which is tracked by these white tokens, on any single person in my mailroom. Now, why would I want to do that? Because I had gotten three clout. If I placed all three on here, at the end of this phase here, if I have as much clout as here, which I would if I had put all three on there, then this one actually gets added to my workplace. And when I do so, this stays in front of me so I can read the ability. And then you find the corresponding tile and place it out into the corporation. Now, I have them sort of organized by their clout levels from zero all the way to six. And here was that specific employee. So I'd take this, and I'd add it to any uh, of the open spots on tier one and put my control color marker on it to show that I control it. Because once I have enough clout, they go into the workplace. Now, instead of placing that clout all in one player in my mailroom and hopefully trying to get those out, you can place it on all on one employee out in the, in the, uh, in the corporation here. So I had three, so let's say I had placed it here instead. 
okay? Now here, after you've done that, you can activate any abilities that you can trigger and you can attract, uh, uh, do an ability if you have as much clout. This one needs two clout to use. I have three of them. So I would take these two, put them back in the supply. This one still has one left over, but I get to enact the middle manager's ability, which says I get to promote any other employee from this tier. So maybe I uh, promote Kendra the temp because it's mine. I go to the next tier. I can put them on any one of these like this. Well, that's great because this was two points before and now it's worth six, but don't get too excited because they tend to get moved and bumped around throughout the entire game. Then these would slide up and a new one would come out. So it gives you new, new uh, aspects, new abilities, new people, and then it'd be the next player's turn. You keep doing this. Now, when you're getting cloud, instead of placing it all on one employee here or all on one employee out on the, in the corporation, you can split it between one employee here and one employee in the, uh, you know, in, in the corporation any way you see fit. So you're somewhat limited as where you could place them, uh, but that's, that's sort of part of the game of why it works so well. Now, why did I move that Kendra the temp? The, the, they're very thematic. She, Kendra's a temp, so they're not going to last very long. You can dismiss Kendra and put the top employee from the deck into her space. So for example, let's say I had two clout, it was in that part of the phase, I could spend that, use her ability, and she would get dismissed. So she'd be gone, and I get to replace her with whoever's on the top of the deck. And let's say we got lucky, we got Finny, which is one of the few six point ones there, and Finny has a really cool ability. Now Finny allows you to promote it exactly two tiers. Now let's say the poacher was up here and Finny was here, and let's say I had all six clout on here, I spent it to activate Finny's ability, which allows it to jump up two tiers. One, two. Well, there's somebody already here. Now, Finny's number is higher than this one, so they can bump this one down. So they bump it down to the next tier. The player bumping it gets to decide where it goes, and they've just taken over that spot. Now, sometimes when you get to go refill the deck, a security guard will come out. If that happens, you'll take a security guard and you'll place it in the top open spot like this. It's a zero number. They kind of just clog up spots. It would get... Uh, you know, removed, and then a new card would come out. Also, anytime any employee was dismissed, like earlier we actually dismissed Kendra the Temp, another tile of the security guard would come out in the next highest tier, and you decide where it goes like that. Now, they just clog spots, but they're easier to bump because they don't have any numbers. So even, even a number of one of an employee, if it's full, can sort of bump this one down to the next tier. In a nutshell, that's how the game's played. You're dismissing or taking, uh, you know, one of these from the mailroom, you are you know, refilling the line, you're moving some of the people that you can to the workspace like this, and then you're activating any abilities. You can activate as many as you want, as long as you can pay for them. And then once the entire board is full, you play through it and make sure you go to the end of the deck for that round. And whoever has the most points is the winner by getting all of the numbers times the numbers of where they're at, plus any additional clout you have on some are worth a point as well. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Now, a lot of the game is played knowing the abilities and using them. Like the HR agent, you can demote any employee on the next tier to promote this HR agent right to it. Now. It's really cool, but it's only a one, which means it's easy for people to bump them down. And if this ever gets demoted, it, they get dismissed off the board. So they can move up fast, but they also get knocked off easy. Uh, this one is you could promote the self star to the next level. So it gets to promote itself. That's pretty cool and thematic. Reggie allows you to switch positions of two opponents in the workplace, and that'll get you some interesting things because there's a lot of adjacency in this game. Like, well, Linda, doesn't allow employees to use their abilities of anyone that's adjacent. So when you're demoting someone, you can place someone's tile right next to this on the board and they won't be able to use their ability. And that's pretty interesting. Sometimes you'll need to use this to move an employee this tier to any empty space, trying to maybe move them away from Melinda. Sometimes you're, you're able to take control of an adjacent employee, meaning it used to be theirs, now it's yours. Maybe you perform the ability of an adjacent employee. So there's a lot of abstract aspects of this game of doing things depending on where they are in, in regards to other employees out in the corporation. So just to show you there's a lot of different abilities and I didn't even show you, I haven't even shown you half of them in here. So that's pretty much it. Most points wins. All right, well, there's Squid Ink. First thing, great art. I love the art in this game. It just draws you right in. It's sort of cartoony, lets you know it's sort of a lighter, don't take yourself too serious style of game. And it brings that across. And I, I just love the way that the art looks. All the creatures are just so fun and, and so enjoyable just to look at this on the board with everything set up. Now, a long time ago, a game came out by someone you may have heard of before, Tom Vassell from the Dice Tower, who designed, co-designed, Nothing Personal with uh, Steve Avery. Now, Nothing Personal was my favorite game of forever, of all time at one point, and it's still in my top 10 of all time. And it's a negotiation game, but in that game, you're like 
messing with each other, playing cards, negotiating, and trying to get up to the top of a mafia tier. Where this has that same idea where you're starting down the bottom and you're trying to move up the different tiers because the higher tiers you are, the more points you're gonna get. And I feel like this is sort of like nothing personal without negotiation and without card play. It's just like very streamlined, but you're, the mechanism of moving up and down the corporate ladder to get points is part of this here. It's the main part of the game. I really like that aspect of this. You make temporary alliances to work together with other players. You're like, go, oh, okay, you know what? Why don't you, if you go there and do this to this one, then I'll do come over here and do this to this, and then we'll all sort of like be in the running for the win or whatever. So you're always working with some players sometimes and then totally screwing people over at the other times. You're constantly in each other's faces. Tons and tons and tons of interaction with this, direct interaction in this game. I love synergizing the abilities. And they, some of them work really well together. I'm gonna bring this one out and I'm gonna move this one over here because this one's ability can't be used because it's next to this one. And then I'm gonna allow this one to, to, to promote this one over here and then I'm gonna float this one off the board and hit you over there. It's like some of these all sort of work together and synergizing which abilities you're using depending on where you are in the situation of the game is a really interesting part of this. Now there's always an answer. You'll see a few of the really powerful cards like Finny, the big, you know, the, uh, the, the, the dolphin that jumps up two tiers that I showed you, but there's always an answer versus powerful cards. You can use the one that allows you to swap or take control of an adjacent character. You could get one that just you know does different things, moving them down, moving this around, dismissing this. Even if you have a powerful character, it's hard to normally just like promote yourself and bump them down. Cause as you do that, you, you need to have higher base clout number than them. So to get a five or a six out from you know, out of the top tiers can be hard, but there are cards that do it. And you need to be watching, and if someone gets a powerful card, and they're actually taking it instead of spending it for the clout, and they're putting it on the board, and you know they're gonna be bringing it up because they have the middle manager that's gonna allow them to bring it up. Well, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna mess things up. There's that little one card, the little HR agent, that allows you to go up and demote somebody and put you in its place. Well, you're number one, you just got rid of a six. But once that player, that little one that's easier for everyone else to demote, it gets dismissed. So all little ways, some cards might feel overpowerful, but they're not. There's always an answer for those, I like it. The abilities and the abstract nature of this is really cool. There's a lot of things that have to do with adjacency and where you're putting players. And when you promote something else and you bump it down, you get to decide where it goes. Oh, I'm gonna place this one right next to this little zero creature and now you can't use it because you can't use it, your ability and you're adjacent to them. I like that. There's definitely an abstract nature to this game that I enjoyed. Uh, it, it, shot, it, it, it did really well. The game itself feels different with different player counts. I feel, I feel like three is the best player count, but all player counts, I'd, I'd not turn down a game because it's fun. With three, it shines. It's like you have just the amount of turns and just the right amount of creatures to keep everything there. With two players, it's almost like a little bit more of a brain burner because you're gonna have a lot more of your own creatures, which means you're gonna have more abilities, which means there's way more to think about, and a lot more opportunities and a lot more, oh my gosh, my brain hurts. The two player game's almost like an expert variant because if you play that for your first game, you're gonna be almost overwhelmed with how many abilities they are and which ones to use and when to trigger this and when to do that. But with three players, it's like perfect. With four players, you'll have the least amount of turns, the least amount of abilities. It might be a way to ease your way into the game if you're afraid of having too many abilities. But I think it's best at three. I wouldn't discount it at any player count. I would like not play with any counter, but three is my favorite, two is my second favorite. Um, now, with that being said, there are some negatives here. Number one, this game's mean. And it might be too mean for some. If you don't like direct interaction, if you don't like people coming right after you and pushing you down, this isn't gonna be the game for you. The person in the lead with this game is always going to be get picked on. So they're always gonna have everyone else talking together, gu you know, gunning at them, pushing them down. You don't wanna take an early lead in this game. You kinda of wanna stay close and then make a big push towards the end because if you don't like that, it's not necessarily a negative thing. Some people don't mind that, but just know that if you're in the lead, you're gonna get destroyed in this game and everyone's gonna be working uh, with each other against you. If you don't like that, that's what's in this game. Also, their king making can happen, especially in a three or four player game where, well, only in a three, four, four player game, where you're going to at some point be like, I've got to do this so I have a chance, but I can either do this to him or do this to her. Uh, I essentially am going to hurt one of you two and one of you two are not going to win because of this. And you can kind of give the game to somebody in some instances. So kin making can happen. But my, those are all sort of very minor nitpicks. My biggest problem with the game is the end game is much too variable. I played one game, because uh, in the end game, you play until the thing is completely full, and then you play until all the cards are gone from the deck and all the three are gone from the, from the, from the board there. 
The problem is it's way too variable. I played one game, a two player game where I was losing. I didn't want the game to end and there was like one spot left, but I purposely was not putting anybody in there and I tried to make the, make the deck and those cards run out and I was able to do so. So that now when the final thing went there, the deck had just been shuffled. So now we had to go through the entire deck again, which added a 15 minutes more to the game. The game was kind of already determined. I wasn't able to come back. And it was just more of a, like going through the motions at that point. And it just made the game not as fun at the end. Uh, but I've had other games where it ends right towards the end. It's like, okay, that worked. I would have much rather have seen something like, as soon as everything's full, finish that round up and take one more round or two, maybe, whatever. But not like you might be playing an entire another deck of cards or it might be over this round. It's way too variable. It makes the ending way too problematic. I get that they wanna make it like not exactly sure because you're gonna make a push right at the end for the big moves. Uh, I did not like the end game. I almost am gonna house root this thing that you get end of the round, play one more round just to keep it the same so you know what's going on. But anyway, with that being said, I love the game. It's fantastic. And because of that, it's getting my highest honor, which is a saxophone serenade, which means I'm keeping it in my gaming library, which means I'm gonna have to get rid of something to keep this thing. So without further ado, let's give this thing its proper due with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.